black wealth. So we first look at, you know, why is the average white, you know, you know, like average white wealth in America is something like 171,000 and for black it's 17,000. Okay. So whites have wealth. We have little to none. The average person, the average American cannot come up with $400 in an emergency. I'm sure most of you have heard that stat, something like two thirds of the people in this country cannot come up with $400 in an emergency. You see what I'm saying? So what has happened in the last 30 years is that the rich has gotten much richer. Certain people have done really, really well, whereas the rest of the country, the average folks, have not done very well. And there's a number of reasons for that. But I'm not going to go into kind of what those specific reasons are. But what I will talk about is what's happening right now is an opportunity to reset and push the restart button of where you go from here. Okay? So if you ever talk about like starting a business, well, potentially this is a good time to start it. However, there's a certain foundation that you need. Like I always talk about like whatever you want to do in life, whether, you, you know, if you want to build wealth, believe it or not, building wealth starts with managing your credit as if your life depended on it. Because if you don't have good credit, no one's going to lend you money. I don't care how good your idea is. No one's going to lend you money. So if you say you want to get out of your situation and improve yourself financially, the first thing you got to do is look at your credit and say, you know, what is my credit score? Who do I owe money? And how do I get myself in a position where I can become a good credit risk to one, be able to borrow money? Let's say tomorrow you had an idea that, you know, I want to start my own food truck. Well, unless you have like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, you're going to need to go out and borrow the money. And the ability to borrow money depends on two things, two big things, right? The management of your credit, having good credit. But number two, it's also about con uh, financial consistency. And financial consistency has nothing to do with how much money you make. It has to do about being um, consistent over a long period of time, deciding that, okay, this is what I'm going to commit to doing. and having a job over a long period of time, because the bank is going to look at you and say, you know, it's not what you're telling me. It's what your credit is telling me about you. How often do you change jobs? How long have you been in the same industry? Right. Um, those things tell us about your ability to pay, but more importantly, banks are looking at your ability to commit. How committed are you to your idea? Because no one's going to lend you money unless they think you're committed to your idea. And it's not enough to say, well, I'm committed. I'm committed. I'm committed. I think your past actions have to demonstrate that you're committed. And the way your past action demonstrate you're committed is, hey, you know what? I've been working in the same job for X period of time. I've been working in that particular field for X number of years. Okay. So in order for you to go out and actually raise money, compounding interest is really the true way of building wealth. And one of the things that I did with, Rachel, with Rachel's family I was going to do with you guys was, I wanted to do a, I was going to do a screen share and show you guys a little bit kind of like this um, investment calculator, because I think this will kind of illustrate my point about having consistency, you know what I'm saying, about if you want to, whether you want to start a business or invest. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this stuff will, um, I mean, some of you have seen before. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. I wanted to show you an example of why people, to some extent, why people are able to build wealth. Again, it's about time and consistency. So this, what this calculator does, and I can send you guys a link to this, it just shows you how if, you, how if someone invests over time and what the results are, you know. So, so one example I wanted to give you guys was, think of it this way. Imagine if every year for the next 20 years, you save $1,000 a year out of your income tax, okay? Here's what that looks like. You start out one year with $1,000, okay? And this is set up based on monthly contribution. So I'm going to make it not, uh, I'm going to make it, uh, say, 1000 It comes to about $83 a month. So the 83 times 12 will equal to about $1,000. If you did that over 20 years and that money was invested just straight in the market, okay? This is what the market, the S&P 500, which is the stock market, is uh, average return over uh, since like 1926. And the dividend is, is compounded almost monthly. So this is going to show you, look at this. That's $93,000, okay? What we're talking about here is, is $1,000 a year, 20 years. My point is wealth is built over time. And the reason it's, this is important to remember is because one of the biggest myths in America is that a lot of us think that 
we're not doing that well because we keep hearing about these guys in Silicon Valley who are becoming millionaires overnight. That's nonsense. The truth of the matter is the average millionaire in America doesn't become a millionaire until they're like 53 years old. Less than 1% of millionaires in America are 35 or below, 1%, okay? And by the way, there are 11 million people in America who are millionaires. And the 11 million, that means people who have a million dollars or more in assets, that doesn't exclude their house. That includes their 401k plan, their stock portfolio, uh, real estate that they own as an investment. You see what I'm saying? But overall, wealth is built over time, okay? So what I'm showing you here is just an example of $1,000 a year. Every year, for the next 20 years, just taken out of your income tax, okay? This is what your potential returns are. The reason I sent the video the other day about compounding interest is because our, our, big, our biggest problem as a people is short-term gratification. We all want to get rich tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Everybody think that they're the Kardashians or they want to be the Kardashian. Okay, the Kardashians are 0.0001%. Okay, 0.001%. They're very, very, that's very, very few. But I think because of the way wealth is so much in our face today with Instagram, you know, it used to be if someone's rich, no one knows it, right? Unless you know them and you're hanging out with them. You know what I'm saying? But today it's very easy for all of us to feel like we're failures. And everybody is putting on a brave uh, uh, front. You know, the person, you know, you, what, what you have, you have a lot of people on Instagram who um, the person's living in somebody's basement or living with, you know, not doing that well financially, but take a picture of everywhere they go. So to give you this impression that they're doing really well, truth of the matter is they're not really doing that well financially. You see what I'm saying? So what's happening is a lot of people are chasing what I call chasing a ghost. My point is, though, is wealth is built over time. There are two ways you build wealth. Two ways. One, you start a business. You see what I'm saying? You have an idea, you, you, you focus on that idea, and you develop a business concept. Okay? So if you have a business idea, the first thing you have to look at is, Am I offering something that people want as a service? And is it, am I offering a service that people are willing to buy? The thing is, is, there's a lot of opportunities out there, but most of the money that is made is not made on the things that are most apparent. The problem is most of us focus on all the same things. You know, look on the internet and we say, this meeting has unlimited, oh, it says this meeting has unlimited minutes. Oh, okay. Um, a lot of us actually focus on this idea that, you know, wealth is, it's just this thing that's supposed to happen overnight. No, it, it takes time to build a business. It takes time to put a concept into place. So there are really two ways to me that one, you have, if you have, you have a job and you decide like, hey, you know what? I'm going to build my wealth by being a consistent investor. If you are a consistent investor, this is what that looks like. Okay. The whole point of this calculator is to show you the magic of compounding, how much money you can make if you're able to like, if you just are consistent, okay? If you have a job, most jobs allow you to set aside up to $19,000 a year. Now, that's a lot of money. And I, unless you have a professional job, you're not going to have $19,000 set aside. But again, it's about consistency. Let's say you, you have your job and you decide that, you know what? You start out an account with $1,000 and you say every month, I'm going to set aside $250 a month. Let's see what that looks like after a 20-year period. And I keep using 20 years because, again, wealth is not made over time. This is what compounded interest look like. That's $258,000, okay? This is just say, starting out with $1,000, putting in $250 a month, okay? So that's one way you could do it. If you own your own business, for example, one of the benefits you have is the government allow you to set aside up to 25% of all the money your business make up to $57,000 a year if your business make more than $200,000, okay? So if you are a business owner and your business is successful, you, the key is going to be being able to save a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? It's to be able to save. Now, I had a really hard time coming up with like what I should talk about. Like with Rachel's family, it was pretty easy to do, to be honest, because, you know, I kind of have an idea of where people stand slightly. And for you guys, everybody's at different phases of their lives. And I don't really know what you guys are interested in. So I can show you these calculators and show you why there's a need to invest and why you want to invest. But what I think would be most helpful is if you guys tell me kind of like, 
what are you trying to, you know, you can ask general question. You know, I want to have an, I mean, I want to be able to kind of help answer question for you guys. So if you have a question, you can ask me, I'm happy to go over some stuff, but when I decided I wanted to give this talk, I, I actually don't know exactly what to talk about. I really don't because um, I can't talk about like, hey, here's how you build wealth if you have a regular job. Well, a lot of you are self-employed or are underemployed. So how realistic for me to come here and tell you, oh, you, well, here's a calculator, set aside $250 and here's $1,000 start here. How, how do I say that if I know that, you know, you don't have jobs that pay you really well or you're kind of struggling or you're just moving around, you know what I'm saying? So this stuff becomes kind of like a pipe dream. You see what I'm saying? So I don't want this to be a pipe dream for anybody. So instead, it's, it's, you, it's you guys who have to tell me, you know, financially, here's what I want to know. Here's where I am, here's where I want to go. And we can have a discussion on, here's what we need to happen. But I will say this though, whatever it is that you want to do in the future or to get yourself going, there are two things I would say. One, this is the best time ever to really work on that plan and conceptually really come up with what you want to do because this is the time for a restart. You know, the government's offering all these different programs. This is a good time to put that in, to start thinking about and putting it on paper, okay? So if you want ideas on how to put together a business plan, how to explore an idea, because you can explore an idea on paper and quickly realize this is not a real business. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference between having a hobby and a business. A business is something that you can start, that you can say, you know, if everything works out, maybe tomorrow, I could be the, that could be the Amazon of tomorrow. And, and I don't think you need to cap yourself on how big you can be. You ever seen that picture of Jeff Bezos sitting in an office of one person? With a, with, a, with, a, with a hand-painted sign in the back that says Amazon. Have you ever seen that picture? Any of you ever seen that picture? I can say, I'm going to post it in the family chat. Jeff Bezos sitting in an office the first day he started Amazon. First day. He's sitting in a small office that looks like a closet with a small sign that says Amazon.com. One guy, one sign. Today, Amazon is a trillion-dollar company, so no one can tell me it's not possible. You see what I'm saying? Anything is possible, Right? But when you look at guys like him, it's, it's determination, it's drive, it's having a plan, it's being flexible, and it's being serious and being committed. You see what I'm saying? That's really where you start. The second thing is the whole credit thing, I think it's important because it demonstrates to investors if you're trying to raise money, it demonstrates to a bank, and it demonstrates to yourself about your level of seriousness. You see what I'm saying? Your level of seriousness. And, you know, we all want to make money. We all want to be financially independent. You know what I'm saying? But there are things on your part that you have to look at and be realistic about, you know, about where you are and where you want to go. How committed are you willing? Are you really willing to take a chance? And are you working on ideas that can turn into a big ideas or are you working on ideas that is capped early on? Like, hey, you know what? I can get big, but this is as big as it's going to get. Man, I just appreciate y'all just listening. Stay tuned for the next episode.